So I will let Meredith get started. So there's a theme to this. It's called the Royal Roast. So, as you can see, Stephanie and I are wearing our British royal headwear. And now we are going to anoint our queen <laughs> for her roast. <laughs> okay, buddy. Amanda, this has been a fun wedding so far. Too bad that DJ Price wasn't available to DJ the wedding for you. It appears he was already booked this weekend, or else I'm sure he would love to be here for you. Only appropriate I get to roast my twin, since I know all of your deepest, darkest secrets. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to first off anoint you as Bridezilla. <laughs> There's much though. Your crown was only $15 from Amazon. <laughs> you came pretty close to being Bridezilla. Your refusal for mom to be able to wear black to your wedding. The longest de decision making on what bridesmaids dresses we would all wear. And of course the drama with your custom dress resulted in you receiving this title. <laughs> often told throughout our lives is that Amanda is the meaner twin, while I tend to pat my back as the nicer twin. She even woke up this morning with a shirt I gave her that says, evil twin. <laughs> I guess this title comes from the fact that when you first meet Amanda, she tends to not smile at you or hold a conversation with you for very long. That does change <laughs> That does change, though, over time, once you get to know her. Growing up, my mom also typically refers to Amanda as the more needy child of the three of us. It really showed as she got older. Does anyone know that for six months, I became her driver because she had failed her driver's test too many times and refused to take it again? It was really fun being your designated driver in high school so she could go out and party, and I had to drive her back. Speaking of partying, Amanda is definitely the more wild of the two of us. I find myself always having to keeping keeping an eye on her, especially since now when you go out with your AT girls, I get a little nervous. <laughs> Lucky for John, that's your job now. Amanda, how many times have you lost your phone in a cab? I blame majority of your crazy nights in New York in the beginning to your partner in crime, Katrina. <laughs> it's been a lifetime with Amanda and I wouldn't have it any other way. John has officially taken my role over, so my advice to you is to make sure you're always prepared for Amanda to give you the silent treatment if she's upset. <laughs> to be prepared to clean her dishes, to appreciate her whining for you to do things for her, and to always be her guinea pig, just like when I had to get my ears and belly button pierced before she did. <laughs> already so this is just adding on to oh, God. It. but it was only uh, appropriate that I would roast John <clears throat> hello Jonathan hello Stephanie I have to say after listening to mayor here I'm a little worried that you may not be any better of an influence on Amanda after all you two didn't eat in a bar and I'm almost certain everyone in this room knows about your alter ego Morty <laughs> Grow up, be an adult, and put Morty in retirement. You know? You know, I'm not sure all of Amanda's extended family here is aware of your strong love for Obama. I get you come from a country. I get you come from a country where healthcare is free, the queen lives forever, and the preferred solution for terrorism is appeasement, but you live in America now, and I think that has helped turn you into a real man. Maybe you would go back to the UK in your place, and most of us would be okay with that. But most importantly, Nancy is just happy this isn't a green card wedding, so congratulations you on getting that done on your own. The audience here is also unaware of how far your fashion has come since meeting Amanda. Sure, you still wear way too small of shirts and way too tight of pants. But hey, by the way, congrats on now fitting into a size medium t-shirt. Amanda said you're really excited about that. 
But knowing you were wearing cargo shorts and white Lacoste trainers the night you met Amanda still makes me cringe. Glad to see she looked past your poor fashion choices. And gosh, I still remember when you went for your first jog around my parents' neighborhood at Thanksgiving in that exact same outfit. I'm sure the neighbors got a good laugh out of that. Just take my advice and stick to wearing smart suits and anything that Amanda tells you to wear moving forward. Speaking of moving forward, let's move forward with the plan that you will not be auditioning for The Voice, ever. Thank you. I get your silly British accent has allowed you to move up in your career because Americans seem to associate a British accent with being smart and intelligent, but that does not mean that you can sing. Singing in the shower, fine. Singing in your apartment, fine. But singing in public for all to hear, not so fine. <laughs> Now luckily I haven't had to carry as much of Amanda's baggage as Meredith has, but John has somehow become like a little sister to me. He whines, he constantly needs fashion advice, he has a sissy dog that he speaks to like a baby. But worst of all, I don't know of anything more feminine than letting John give someone a nickname. So here's to all the bears out there. J-Bear, P-Bear, Panda Bear, G-Bear, and God help us that someday soon, there will be a baby bear. <laughs> saying that usually I'm pretty good at public speaking, but when it came to writing this speech, I was at a loss for how, about, how to go about doing so. Not quite sure why, but then when the tears started coming down my face, which believe it or not, I do cry sometimes, <laughs> I realized my little sister is now a married woman, and even more exciting than that, I finally got the little brother to pick on for years to come. <laughs> I'm going to start by recalling the first time I heard about John. I happened to be visiting the twins in New York that weekend when Amanda met him. Naturally, I could not keep up with the twins on a Saturday night, so I went back to their place a little early. I was awoken by Amanda stumbling around in the dark after she decided to return home. I asked her how the rest of the night went, and she exclaimed in this exact tone, I met a British boy tonight! <laughs> she proceeded to tell me that they met at a bar, exchanged numbers, and he was fresh off the boat in the U.S. <laughs> But he was wearing these ugly white Lacoste sneakers. <laughs> After she told me that, I assumed I would never hear about this British guy ever again. <laughs> Much to my surprise, I kept hearing this kid being brought up, and before I knew it, Amanda had her first real relationship in New York, and the rest is history. I think I should mention at this point that I had not even met my husband, Andrew, and here we are tonight married and with a kid already. <laughs> and I have always been quick to make a decision, but that is in no way an insult to John or to Andrew. <laughs> All right, now enough about how they met. Amanda, Amanda, Manny, my feisty little sister Amanda. My whole life, you and Mary have driven me nuts, yet at the same time, we are about as close as three sisters can be. I always enjoyed somehow convincing one of you to be on my side during a fight so that we could gang up on the odd one out. <laughs> but occasionally, you would convince Mayor to join forces with you and gang up on me. That's when I knew you had a little Stephanie in you. <laughs> While we did fight often, one thing was for sure. If you messed with my sisters, you messed with me. Uh. We didn't have a brother, so I took it upon myself to fill that role, and I still do today. I knew it would take a special person to not only handle you, but also Mayor, because you two are like a two-for-one at times. <laughs> I also knew it would take a really special person to accept the challenge of dating Stephanie's little sister. And Morty certainly accepted the challenge. While we were at your bachelorette a few weeks ago, you may or may not remember taking yet another page out of my book when you decided to say a few words about each of us that came to Austin. When you got to me, you said something that I found shocking, yet slightly flattering. You said, all you've ever wanted was for me to be proud of you. Well, Amanda, I've never been more proud of you than I am today. 
You kicked ass in college, even had a better GPA than I did. <laughs> have established an incredible career doing what you love, showed New York who's boss, but most importantly, you chose an amazing guy to be your husband. And I really couldn't be more proud of my little sister. Now, now on to John, also known as Morty for me. I was unsure of you at first, but somehow you were the first guy to pass all my tests with flying colors. Not only are you an awesome person for Amanda, but you have also managed to become the brother I never had. I knew I couldn't let Amanda get rid of you when you started calling me on Sundays just to chat. <laughs> and excuse the language, but that took some serious balls at first. <laughs> you have an unbelievable family that we are so excited to have in our lives and incredible friends that are all here tonight. I know Mir and I feel very lucky to be able to count on you for brotherly support as well as someone we know will keep Amanda in check. <laughs> Now, I haven't been married very long, but I do feel like it's been long enough to give some advice. Enjoy the rest of tonight, because tomorrow you will wake up and it will all seem like a foggy day. Enjoy your awesome honeymoon, because it's a once-in-a-lifetime trip. Enjoy New York before you guys finally move somewhere that doesn't cost a small fortune. <laughs> but most importantly, just enjoy being married. The first year will fly by, but it will certainly be one of the best years of your life as you two adjust to being newlyweds. Some days will be tough and some days will be great, but trust me when I tell you there's nothing better than having a best friend for life that you know will never let you down and always be there for you. I love you both very much. Yes. Which is weird to say because this is my twin sister that's getting married. <laughs> so, oh. got married. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you, Sam. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna get started. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's been an incredible five plus year journey with the two of you. I must admit, it was obviously a little intrusive to have someone as special as John come in and steal Amanda from me. But luckily enough, I didn't mind because he was nice, had an accent, and clearly needed some help from Amanda on the style front. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's been quite a life having a twin, especially one that you spend every minute with, go to college with, move to a new city with, go through ups and downs with, celebrate birthdays with, with, the list goes on and on. Then suddenly she meets someone, which we both knew was probably going to happen at some point, more likely, more likely for her than me. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Joe. <laughs> Joe. I was expecting laughs here. Come on. <laughs> and I have to start sharing time with someone else. I mean, I never thought her wild clubbing nights in NYC would ever end. Fortunately enough, she met someone that was truly her match. I remember the first time I met John, and you could just tell he was a genuine person and wanted to spend time with Amanda. Dating in New York is tough, but luckily enough, Amanda swooped him up as soon as he came over off the boat. <laughs> John is someone who just fits in perfectly with our group of friends. Mind you, he had no friends in America, so we were stuck entertaining him, but we loved it. <laughs> to see the relationship go through, grow through the years, as my relationship with John has, has been everything I could hope for. It must have been intimidating for him to date a girl with a twin, but he made the relationship with me just as, as important as the one he had with Amanda. I mean, I'm sure my dad was pretty jealous that I was asked for Amanda's hand in marriage before he was. <laughs> I'm beyond excited to see my sister the happiest she's ever been, and to have someone who will be by her side no matter what. It's so natural to be around the two of them, and I feel part of the Little Bear family. J-Bear, P-Bear, Darby, and then John's family. Molly's. I'm so excited for us to spend our lives together. I mean, I must say, I felt like those vows today with me standing next to Amanda, it felt like you were speaking them to me. So. I guess we're married. <laughs> Partying. Wait, wait, wait. We just have to mention the 
moonshine. Yeah. Sorry. So this was at everyone's. Oh, hey, G. Um, this was at the table. It's a uh, representative of every time you come to Knoxville, Tennessee, my dad John makes me have a shot of moonshine. I think all of you drank it right after you ate, but if there's any left, cheers, have a shot. <laughs> cheers. And then G wants to say a few words. Hey y'all, because that's what you do. <laughs> Firstly, I just want to say thanks everyone for being here for my brother's wedding. It's very touching. She <laughs> made uh, I also want to say, um, where have they gone? <laughs> Those two gorgeous girls who are just up here. I feel like I have gained two. Well, three sisters, which I never had, so that's incredible. <laughs> and um, I have one small thing I want to do, and then we can all party. <laughs> so uh, it being Shakespeare's 400th anniversary this year, I just want to say. And uh, you think this would come naturally to me, being an actress, but it doesn't. <laughs> Because um, I suppose I'm usually playing somebody else, so that helps. <laughs> so I have a small sonnet prepared. Hopefully I'll remember the words. So, uh, this is for the happy couple. Let me not to the marriage of true minds admit impediments. Love is not love which alters when it alteration finds or bends with the remover to remove. Oh no, it is an ever fixed mark that looks on tempests and is never shaken. It is the star to every wandering bark whose worth is unknown, although his height be taken. Love's not time's fool, though rosy lips and cheeks within his bending sickle's compass come. Love alters not with his brief hours and weeks but bears it out even to the edge of doom. If this be error, and upon me proved, I never writ, nor no man, nor no man ever loved. Congratulations. <laughs>